Halo is one of the biggest gaming franchises in history, and it's been all over the place in terms of quality. Today, uh, on Chaos Gaming, in preparation for Halo Infinite, we're going to do the impossible. We're going to rank every mainline Halo game from the worst to the absolute best. Now, you let me know in the comments what you think of our rankings, and heck, give me yours while you're at it. And let's do our best to keep the comments civil. Make sure you guys are following the page with notifications on, and let's start off. Remember, this is worst to best... Halo 4, at number 9, with a nice big splat. Now, Halo 4 was released for the 360 in late 2012, and it was the first game to not be developed by Bungie. Instead, Halo 4 was put together by a new studio called 343 Industries, who infamously and intentionally hired a bunch of people who didn't like Halo in order to change the formula and make it more appealing to newcomers. Bad idea. Basically, this meant making Halo more like Call of Duty. Halo 4 may look pretty, and the sound design may be solid, and the storytelling may actually be pretty good, but the gameplay? It was a tremendous step in the wrong direction, and uh, it died almost immediately after launch. Now on the positive side, Halo 4 looks great, the story is solid, expanding upon Chief and Cortana's relationship in a way that was only hinted at in previous games, but the gameplay, the level design, the enemy AI, it was bad. Nobody wanted to stick with the game. They just didn't. Plus, the multiplayer was overhauled to make it more like Call of Duty. They added custom classes, ordnance drops, and extremely linear maps. Halo 4 does a bit of a... Well, I mean, it has a bit of a fan club, but other than that, no. Next up is Halo 5 Guardians. Now, Halo 5... Uh, has gotten the better, or well, it's gotten better with time. It was still a hefty slap in the face, and it was a step away from what people wanted from a Halo title, and it also didn't help that the story was complete and utter nonsense. Let's start there, shall we? The story of Halo 5 has so many plot holes and leaps in logic, and it doesn't help that in order to even understand it, you have to be completely caught up on your Halo lore. That means games, books, comics, terminals, TV shows, everything. Even if you did understand everything that was going on the story, it's lame. It's short. This was by far the shortest Halo campaign to date, and it wasn't fun to play. It just, it wasn't. You had awful squad AI. You had an abundance of recycled enemies. It was just bad. Now let's talk about multiplayer. Now yeah, we had a fun multiplayer, certainly the most unique of all the Halo games, and I'll let you guys decide if that's good or bad, but it suffered from a massive case of ship it now and fix it later. The game launched with barely any content and a crap load of bugs that took forever to fix. Now today, the game is perfectly functional, but it's still not even at the level of content that you got from Halo 3 and Halo Reach. It's just, it's not. Now we're at number seven, Halo Wars, the first non-shooter Halo game. It launched 11 years ago, and it was a real-time strategy game developed by Ensemble Studios. Set 21 years before combat evolved, Halo Wars let you control your army of UNSC soldiers in the battle against the Covenant, while also expanding upon what the Halo universe was like before the events of the main game. Now, it's not for everybody. If you're not a fan of RTS games, you probably didn't like it. But the ones that did, they really did. The gameplay was simple enough for newcomers to understand, but it also had a lot of depth, and if you're an experienced RTS player, you could find it as a challenge. And since we're on that topic, at number six, Halo Wars 2. Released four years ago, many people consider this one to be the best Halo game release since 343 took over. Developed by 343 and Creative Assembly, Halo Wars 2 expands upon the first game's gameplay while also making it a little more story intensive. This time around, more emphasis is put on the Brutes and where they stood in the conflict between the humans and the Covenant. While the gameplay was simplified from the first, it's still a pretty good balance of casual and complicated. If you're a fan of Halo and you want to get into RTS games, Halo Wars 1 and 2, you're probably not going to be disappointed. They're good starting points. Now we've reached number 5, which is pretty much the halfway point. We're starting to get into the good. Halo 3 ODST. Now, this game was heavily criticized at launch, it being full price. And I get it, but it's now remembered as one of the best Halo properties ever released. The story was a much smaller scale than what we're used to. You weren't a super soldier anymore. You were just a regular fighter trying to keep people safe. The atmosphere, the music, the overall vibe of ODST was unique, and it helped create this feeling of what the Halo universe was, well, what it was like for a normal human. ODST also has some of the best writing in the entire franchise, again, showing how the weight of this tremendous conflict was being carried by ordinary humans instead of super soldiers. Again, the game was criticized for how it launched, and I get it. A relatively short campaign bundled with the Halo 3 multiplayer for 60 bucks? I know, this could have just been a $20 DLC, but today, you can get the game super cheap, and it's part of the Master Chief Collection, so it's more than worth the money, but back in the day, it was pretty lame, that's why I put it at number 5. At number 4, this gets hard. Halo 2. 
Now, it was fantastic. The multiplayer mode was great. It helped push online shooters forward. It did have a lot of flaws that made it not age as well as the other Bungie Halo games, as many of you probably know. Halo 2 started as a much bigger game, but due to time constraints for Microsoft, much of that had to be cut and stuff that remained had to be largely rushed through development. This is why Halo's 2 campaign, it's much more linear than Combat Evolved and why the enemy AI is a lot less predictable. Now, part of the fun of a Halo game is learning the behaviors of each enemy type and strategizing around that, but in Halo 2, you got things like sniper jackals and more aggressive elites that would instantly kill you. I mean, it was pretty crazy. Halo 2's insane difficulty is still talked about to this day, and that all stems from the fact that so many corners had to be cut. However, with all that being said, Halo 2 also had some of the best writing, the best storytelling in the entire series. The dialogue for Chief, Arbiter, and the Prophets is fantastic, and the gameplay may not be as good as before, but the story was far superior. And let's talk about multiplayer. I mean, it changed console multiplayer forever. In terms of gameplay, it still holds up today. Now we're at number three. Halo Reach. Now, Halo Reach was a very controversial game in the community upon release, and I think it's aged incredibly well. It was Bungie's final game in the series, and they wanted to send things off with a bang, and they did. It's a prequel showing the world of Halo before Master Chief and how the Covenant got such momentum in the war. The story? It's nearly perfect. It really is. Reach is a much darker and more mature theme than other Halo campaigns, and that's also the ending will hit you right in the heartstrings, which it does. The characters? They're memorable. The writing? It was excellent. There's tons of great one-liners, and what made it so divisive in the community? Well, that was the addition of armor abilities. So things like spring jet packs and armor lock made the game very different from other Halos. But I love the multiplayer of Reach. I did. I have to acknowledge that a lot of people were turned off by it. However, this was more made up of the... I mean, well, it was made up for. There was a fantastic forge mode and there was a firefight mode. So all in all, it was a win. Now we're at number two. And these uh, number one and number two could go either way. Halo 3. Yep. This is one, uh, I mean, most people put it at the top of their list, and I get it. Released 13 years ago, the biggest video game launch of all time, I think. Story, solid. Concluded the war between Humans, Covenant, and Flood. Then we dove more into Master Chief as a character. We helped him get Cortana back from the grave mind. I mean, the level design of Halo 3 went back to a more open style of combat evolved, and this was the right decision. It gave the player more options on how to approach their combat. Then multiplayer, well, that may be one of the best multiplayer games of all time. There's so much content. 4v4, big team battle, party games, competitive games, custom games. It truly had something for everybody. Plus, we were introduced to Forge Mode. And that mixed with custom game options made it possible to basically create your own game brand new within Halo 3. Number one, no shocker, Halo Combat Evolved. The game that started it all. It is one of those rare examples of a franchise starting game that is still the best in the franchise. Now, uh, it was the launch title for the original Xbox, and it had a lot to prove, but it did it. I mean, the game reinvented first-person shooters on the console, and its level design is still referenced to this day as some of the best in the FPS genre. The story of Combat Evolved is great. It introduces us to the world of Master Chief and the Covenant, while also letting us discover things like the Flood. Multiplayer? It was pretty basic, but that was the whole point. The game is simple because that's how it's the most fun. And like I said, the level design of Combat Evolved is some of the best you can find in a first-person shooter. It took influence from games like Doom and Quake. It slowed things down. It lets you think about your movements and how you were going to approach the combat scenario. It is one of the most critically acclaimed games of all time, and it's not hard to see why. Maybe a controversial statement, I don't know, but I think Combat Evolved is still the best Halo game ever released. You guys let me know if you agree or disagree. If you enjoyed, drop a like, and I'll see you soon.